Okay, I think we can get started now. So we don't have a whole lot of people here today, but uh, it's all the good quality people, I'm sure. So good morning or afternoon, depending on where you are. Um, my name is Rebecca Hartman Baker. Uh, we're going to start the NUG monthly meeting starting now. So uh, here's sort of our schedule for today. So first of all, this should be an interactive meeting. I don't want to be here and waiting for you all to say anything. Uh, so please participate. You can raise your hand or you can just speak up since we only have nine people. Just speak up, I think. That's the best, best way to do it. Uh, and then, of course, you can also um, join in discussions in the webinars channel on the Nurse Users Slack uh, while we're having this meeting. Okay, so today's agenda. Uh, first, we're going to talk about win of the month. And then today I learned we're going to have some announcements and CFPs, and then we're going to have the topic of the day, which is the allocation year transition. And my colleague Helen He is here to talk to you all about what's happening for that. Um, and then we'll talk about, um, you know, if you all have any suggestions for future topics of what you might be interested in hearing about. And finally, we'll do last month's numbers. So let's get started with the win of the month. So. This is your time to shine. Um, do you have an achievement that you want to share, or you have a shout out to someone else's achievement, like a paper accepted, solve the bug, science achievement, innovative use of high performance computing? Anybody want to share anything that you've accomplished this month, or someone that you know has accomplished this month? Uh, this is Koichi from PNL. I think uh -huh. I, I have some uh, accomplishments. This Great. Month. Okay. One is the I did submit it, not accepted yet. Uh, there are some papers uh, heavily uh, that describes technical aspects of the climate simulations we run on mainly on Cori, some on Edison. Some interesting aspect of this paper being again technical. We for first we noted our computer code, I mean, kind of model code is run slowly on KNL compared to Haswell or Edison. So I really dig into some literature published by actually NASC staff and, and uh, uh, NASA, uh, you know, some studies actually dig into part of the CSM code we used and then why it is slow. Basically lack of open MP and the lack of vectorization it doesn't really make compiler easy to vectorize. And then, and then some other, among some other aspects. So we did point it out and cited those papers in, in our paper so that the people being aware how those legacy Fortran code uh, does not fully taking advantage of this more recent many core architecture you know, parameter CPU node is also many core architecture, even though it has more memory. So probably kind of model code still runs faster than KNL. So anyway, that's one accomplishment. The other is uh, I am also contributing this new special interest group at NASC NAG for another kind of model called WOLF. So we started some user group to enhance communication among the, the users running Wolf and NASC, and then to explain or to even contribute documentation on how to compile and the best practice on how to run this model. And then we apply for allocation, uh, and then we just got uh, allocation for the rest of this year. And then we're gonna follow up with the uh, renewal allocation for the next year. And we started the benchmarking simulation on Palmata. And uh, also we are drafting the NASC documentation. Uh, so hopefully this gets uh, reviewed sometime early next year so that all the Wolf model users are ready to run the model on the Parameter uh, when the transition happens. So those two are my accomplishments. Well, awesome, congratulations. Thanks. Those are great. Yeah, thanks for sharing. Sure. Yeah, okay. Um, Anybody else have any accomplishments you want to share? Might be hard to top Koichi, I guess. <laughs> uh, 
All right. Well, we can move on to our next topic, which is today I learned. So is there anything that you've learned recently that might uh, benefit other users to hear about? Uh, you know, if you had something you got stuck on, but you figured it out, um, you know, there's probably other users who might have that same experience could really benefit from yours. Um, any tips for using NERSC or just anything that might benefit other NERSC users? That's that's the question. I also have a few stuff I learned as well. This okay. is poetry again. <laughs> Sorry to really, uh, I don't know, occupying the stage this time. <laughs> but uh, I think uh, good things I learned is the uh, a few applications I've been using for my uh, workflow, but I'm analyzing those data on a net CDF file, like NCO, NCL, and NCView. At first, I thought, wow, I, the, there's no modules on Parmata. So I thought I have to install myself. But once I load SPAC and uh, E4S uh, stack uh, module, then I can actually, I can find all those uh, installed in, in the, the, the new, at least newest E4S version to do on 05. So I recommend uh, when, when we go to Parmata, we didn't find, if we don't find the applications we used to use, maybe still, you know, at least try loading SPAC and then also loading uh, FOS to check. And if not, I have some one library I don't find. So I might try to use SPAC to install that for myself and I might report that later here. So that's one thing I learned. The other things I learned, I saw some actually similar things in the Slack channel, but the, the, um, the disk usage on a scratch system, uh, I just realized that if I download a file from HPSS to scratch system, even though I download the file to other users scratch space, in, in my case, I did that to help analyzing my other project members. So I downloaded the file from HPS to other users scratch space, but still it was counted as my disk usage for the scratch space. So, so I, I suddenly got error message when I submitted a job. Hey, your sp scratch space is full. I, you cannot submit a job. But my scratch space has a space, but then I downloaded those files. If we include those, then uh, that really goes hundred percent of my quota. So I had to do something for this, um, but I thought that might not be so well known among the users. So be careful when you are doing something for other group members, like for downloading files or space that might surprise you on for other um, uh, occasions. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's good advice. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's, that's great feedback. You know, um, over the years, we've kind of come back and forth on whether this should be group or project director or directory or um, individually based quotas. Um, and sometimes we're limited by the technology we happen to have, but, um, but you're right. We should, we should mention that very high in the documentation um, yeah yeah um, probably file system so we'll get that in okay thank you yeah definitely and then your first advice about uh about spac or sorry e4s and then spac load all these different uh, libraries and applications and things that's absolutely correct they have like i don't know several hundred different for things that you can load from that E4S module. So it's it's a pretty amazing treasure trove if you kind of look through it and see what's there for you. So yeah, thanks. Yeah. Thanks for sure. sharing. Sure. Okay. Well, I'll share something that I learned within the past month. So you know, there's this quote right down here. If we knew what we what it was we were doing, it would not be called research, would it? And it's attributed to Einstein. Somebody somebody told me, you know, that's apocryphal at best i'm like yeah i, I figured it, it was not really true but anyway the point of it still stands <laughs> um and I'm actually looking the the nug slack i think in the general channel uh for 
uh, for that discussion from last month. And it was, uh, he, he also included a link to a really interesting article about attributions in papers and how things kind of can become kind of like a game of telephone where, you know, somebody says that the first author said this thing, but that's not exactly right. And then the next person quotes that uh, second paper while saying that the first author said something and it, it just becomes more and more distorted. Anyway, it's just really interesting. And I also learned about from that article about uh, why we why it's sort of a urban myth, but people think it's true that that um, that uh, spinach is high in iron. It's attributed apparently to a typo in a paper from the 1940s, but also nobody really knows if it really was a typo in this paper. So anyway, really interesting article. I could share that again with you all on the Nug Slack if you're interested. Just bring that back up to be the fresh thing. Really interesting. All right, so moving on, I guess, uh, or unless anybody else has a today I learned, um, we should give everybody time for that. Sorry, got excited. All right, well, announcements and CFP. So let's talk about, um, there's two really good uh, calls for participation, both from the uh, from the the Krell Institute. Uh, so the first one is the the James Coronas Award in Leadership, Community Building, and Communication. So there's there's soliciting nominations for that. Uh, the nominations are due December 31st. Um, I happen to know that this is a great award because I won it. <laughs> I was the first winner of this award. Um, so if you if you know somebody who's a mid-career scientist who is um, really a big leader, community builder, and communicator, then um, be sure to nominate them for that award. And um, I'm also on the award uh, evaluation committee nowadays, and it's it's really great. And you get to see all these really amazing people doing amazing work. Okay, so then the second one is the DOE Computational Science Graduate Fellowship. So if you know a, a person who is going to be a, a graduate student in the fall, or they have completed their first year of graduate school towards a PhD, and they're doing this at a US institution, and I think they have to be a US citizen or permanent resident, um, then they can submit uh, an application to, for the DOE Computational Science Graduate Fellowship. Um, and that's due on January 18th. Um, it's a great fellowship program. Uh, I was not a CSGF fellow, <laughs> but uh, it is a great program. Um, and I get to review some of those as well this year. So that'll be fun. Uh, anyway, just wanted to bring those up. Um, we've got one upcoming event currently scheduled. Uh, it's going to be in January. We were so close to the holidays. Nothing's happening right now. Um, and it's the Ideas ECP webinar. And it's about uh, something called OpenScapes, supporting better science for future us. Uh, it has to do with open science and, and keeping science open. Anyway, very it should be a really interesting webinar. Uh, and I'm going to post these slides after, the web, after this session. Um, and so you'll be able to click on those links. And then finally, I just want to really stress the Corey to Perlmutter transition office hours. So we've held five office hours since November, and we've met with more than 90 users. Uh, and I think it's been really helpful for people. Uh, so if, if you have any concerns or fears or anything about transitioning from Corey to Perlmutter, come see us in our office hours. So we're going to have office hours tomorrow. Uh, and then we'll have two more in January that we have scheduled. And we may extend it or we may take a little break and come back in a few months uh, to do more. But anyway, tomorrow uh, from 9 a.m. to noon Pacific time, you can come see us in our Corey to Perlmutter transition office hours. And then if you, if you can't make that one, uh, we'll have another one on Friday, January 6th, and another one on Thursday, January 12th. And 
So I think this is a really great opportunity for people. And we have experts from all of our different uh, user-facing groups. They'll be on hand there, and so they'll be able to help you with a wide variety of, of issues. So that's that. Uh, OK, and then finally, I thought I'd bring up uh, career centers. So if you're looking for a job or you know somebody who is, we have a lot of positions open right now. This is not even a complete list. I just put the ones that I thought would probably be most appealing to this audience. Um, but so there's several new ones. So uh, the HPC user environment architect, that one just came out this week. And then the science engagement engineer and HPC consultant, they were new this past week. Um, and then all of the others that you can see there. So. Yeah, we're actively hiring, so we'd be really interested. We know that nurse users can make really good nurse staff members. So if you're interested in any of these positions or other ones, or you know someone who is, then please um, please look take a look at these jobs and apply or get them to apply. Okay, we have a lot of open positions. All right. So now we're going to talk about the allocation year transition. So Helen, would you like to uh, be, would you like to be the one sharing your screen, or would you like for me to do it? I think you're muted. Sorry. Yeah, I'll ask you to just uh, uh, shift the slides for me, please. Okay. Well, so let me introduce my colleague Helen. He. Uh, she's going to talk to you all today about the allocation of your transition. Next slide, please. So I will cover these topics, the New Year's allocations and the, alloc the transition process, what happens on the start day of the new allocation, and what will be changing in the new allocation year. What about uh, the discontinued users? Next slide, please. The allocation of 2023 uh, is from January 18th, Wednesday, to Tuesday, January 16th of the next year. Um, your allocations from the AY 2022 will not carry over. And there will be an allocation award emails going out this week, basically today or tomorrow, expecting some um, allocation emails. Um, pay attention that we, will ha we have separate CPU and GPU awards. The next year's uh, Allocation capacity is all based on per mother um, hours, but the allocated CPU hours can be used for query and per mother CPU. The allocated GPU allocation will be used for uh, per mother GPU. We will charge, uh, uh, next slide, I didn't, oh, yeah, so sorry. We'll charge starting from uh, second day, the Thursday of January 19th. Next slide, please. So what happens at the AY transition? Um, first of all, the IRIS database needs to be updated with the new allocation data, such as projects awarded, users, your CPU and GPU allocations, and HPS storage allocation hour, uh, uh, awards. Then the, uh, each of the computational systems, um, users and projects data needs to be synced up with IRIS database about active users. And we also we all need to on this, as a transition, we also need to clean up batch jobs that do not have the new allocations or users. We we'll sometimes have system maintenance um, happening on the on the transition day, just to co to to coordinating those. We may have some policy changes, software changes on different systems, and we have published a whole web page about AY transition uh, from twenty twenty two to twenty twenty three about all of these, uh, what's happening. Next slide, please. So shortly before AY 2022, the some of the, um, for the transition already started. For example, um, the week before the AY start, we will have no new user account creation and validation. And since October, 2022, we are not accepting um, ERCAP requests for new projects. Then, uh, starting from the uh, when allocation email, award email is sent out, uh, we will open up a um, IRIS staging 
uh, API for the PIs to do something to prepare for next year, especially for the continued projects. You have the deadline from now until one weekish before a new AY that PIs must nominate which users will continue. You have the API, you log in, and you see that um, that the, all the users are not automatically renewed into the new allocation year. The PIs have to must have to uh, check those boxes to for the new uh, continued users. And also, PIs have to check and update which users will have the premium QoS access. Just for your uh, convenience, we have inherited the AY22's allowed list of uh, premium, but you need to check and update that. Also, uh, before the deadline, and we have um, an instruction um, link for you to follow how to do those. There's also like there's a toggle that you can allow all users to continue. You can also um, allow all users to have uh, premium just for your convenience. There's a toggle buttons. Uh, just um, a reminder that before the end of this year, it's it's great. Uh, it's a good idea for PIs or users to check all your premium jobs in the queue right now. If you don't do anything, and if those jobs happen to start in AY23, you might have some unexpected uh, bigger charges. And also, if you forgot to renew a user that has uh, premium jobs in the queue, then when the new year starts, those jobs will be um, deleted because those users don't have the a premium access. So double check your jobs in the queue uh, shortly before the new AY starts. Next slide, please. Then um, what happens on AY day? First of all, we will have about um, two and a half hours of iris outage that um, we are putting, we are, um, migrate all the new data into it. So users, if they're logged in at that point, they need to log out and log in to see new data. Uh, we will have a scheduled maintenance for Corey on the day of the AY start. Uh, those are um, very minor upgrades with little um, maintenance patches, but nothing um, to affecting user AYM, user software, user um, uh, OS default modules, everything. So no, no changes um, affecting users. For Perlmutter, uh, the plan is to have no downtime. And, uh, but there will be some, like there will be live updating from Iris. So you might uh, expecting some uh, slurm command slowness during the syncing with Iris, but it's very short, very transient, and it happens uh, at different time, maybe on different logging nodes, et cetera. And um, expecting all other systems and services up at this point. Next slide, please. There will also be a lot of changes to, for the jobs in the queue. Basically, um, all the below jobs will be uh, deleted on both query and parameter. So if the jobs, if you uh, the project is not continuing, all the jobs associated with that project will be deleted. If a user is not continuing in a project, that user's job will be deleted. If a user has no access to the premium and has a premium jobs in it, those jobs will be deleted. All the overrun jobs will be deleted because at the start of the new allocation, you will have, have uh, uh, hours. And also according to our policy, uh, jobs being held older than 12 weeks will be deleted. Next slide, please. Then after AY2023 starts, uh, we would like to remind the PIs, you should go um, into the IRIS um, database and check the each of your users, the CPU and GPU allocation hours or percentage that you have set for them. Uh, for your convenience, we have inherited the hour or percentage allowed from last year, but you might wanna change. And especially for for the uh, GPU allocations, because there was they were new uh, starting this year, majority of them are actually at one hundred percent right now. Because especially the beginning of the this year, they were free. Um, so pay special attention to the to the GPU hours percentage allowed and make adjustments for your uh, members. Next slide, please. So 
to uh, one big change for this year's policy is that NERSC has added, um, modified our appropriate user policy with the addition of a user code of conduct. Uh, this is designed to uh, establish our user community norms for how we, um, all the community, would interact with one another. The community includes NERSC staff, our about 9,000 users, vendors, speakers, etc. cetera. Um, the, <clears throat> the club we would like to foster and future enhancing our collaborative culture of respect, fa fairness, and inclusion. Uh, lots of um, examples of communication happens uh, with emails, Slack messages, uh, user tickets, uh, training events, documentations, conferences, working groups, some clubs, meetups, all sorts of communications, uh, we would like to establish this uh, community norm that we have this uh, user code of conduct. Uh, there are more information in the FAQ page and uh, October NUC talk by Rebecca. Uh, the link is uh, on, on the bottom of the page on the slide. So what we would do is we would require all users to agree to these new terms. Uh, you will be able to do so once the AY starts. Um, after January 18th, when you log into Iris, you will see an API pop up, and you have you would uh, click and ex accept the terms of the agreement. So any user who does not complete this task by February 20th will be considered as discontinued users, and their account will be deactivated. Next slide, please. So we'll tell you what happens to the. Oh, oh sorry, that that's another slide. <laughs> uh, um, or talk about what happens for the discontinued users. So the, um, now for now, the second big um, change for the AY 2023 is that Corey is going to be retired in March, 2023. The uh, process timeline has already started uh, from October, 2022. Uh, we have already set um, <clears throat> implement software freeze that what that means is that no new user facing software will be installed by by NERSC, there, unless there is critical security uh, concerns. As I already mentioned, uh, the AY twenty twenty three allocations are based on perimeters capacity. But the so that we actually with Corey being on, you have we have more computing uh, power for the year. Um, also, starting November through January, we have been doing lots of transitioning trainings and office hours. And the next office hour is tomorrow. The one training happened on December uh, 1st. Uh, we have uh, slides and videos available if you would like to check those out. And also, then in the late January, early February, we, we will announce the final date for decommission decommissioning, the final date uh, <laughs> as T. Then the final date minus one week, uh, what we want to do is we will put on a system reservation so that uh, jobs will still run, but won't run across the boundary of the decommissioning date, uh, the, the retirement date. The T uh, stands for retirement date. Then um, on the retirement date, all the jobs on, in the queue will be deleted. Then no more jobs can be submitted. We will give you um, some time. We will be able to log in through about one more week that you can log into the, the uh, Cori system and uh, get your data from Cori Scratch. Then and one week after the retirement date, we will close logging nodes permanently. Then about one month after, we will disassemble Cori. So Cori retirement, uh, not only Cori has Volcano, but also Cori GPU, um, Cori, let's say Cori JGI, Cori, uh, there's another, some nodes of the large memory nodes. Those will also be retired on Cori, but the current plan is to uh, migrate to perimeter of those large memory nodes with no um, set timeline yet. Next slide, please. Now talk about the discontinued users. So I, we mentioned if you have new pro, no projects, uh, your project is not renewed or your, your PI if or, or for continued projects, but you're not renewed by your PI, those users will be discontinued. Also, if you've uh, 
not have not signed the new code of conduct, new uh, user policy by February 20th, those users will be continue, discontinued as well. And for those users, you have limited logging and access until February 20th. Then, but uh, you can log in, but you cannot run batch jobs. Then um, after that, you have about five more months to um, access HPS's long-term um, archive. Up until February 20th, you do have read and write to, to, to HPSS. After um, February 20th, you only have read access. And then after July 20th, you would lose access to HPSS uh, permanently. All right. So that, that is all for uh, the AY process transition. Are there any questions for me, please? Can you hear me? I, I guess you explained it all so well that nobody has any questions. <laughs> I'm a bit worried. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, no, I, I had a quick question. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, Go ahead. Hi, my name's Derek. Um, so <clears throat> I I, uh, I was on a couple of the like Quarry GPU um, kind of like, what's the per, the project? I think it was M1759 or something like this. Mm -hmm. um, is that gonna be, is that project gonna be discontinued? at the when core is decommissioned or like on january 18th basically yeah uh, so I, can, I i think i can help answer that so no no projects get um will be discontinued um when Corey goes away um it's just the machine is going away um so all the projects will continue and each project has a separate allocation of um, cpu time and GPU time. Um, if you were using Cori GPU, um, we never charged for that. So um, that was never anything that came out of your allocation. And so you should switch over to using uh, Perlmutter GPU, but then that time will be charged. So I guess in a certain sense, a, a free resource is, is going away, even though it's not a real big one. Yeah, yeah. That's. I was just curious if it's going away on the 18th or in March. But... Oh, so yeah, now um, projects that didn't renew for next year will go away, um, as Helen described. Okay. So, so Richard, though, do you know if M1759 is going away? I mean, that's, oh, uh, that's one we control. Let me <laughs> check. Those announcements were going out today. Is oh, that yeah, right? I can't actually check. Mm -hmm. um, I could... I don't know offhand, but I could probably look. But it is yeah, that pro like project was approved. Okay. Oh, it was approved? Yeah. We got the but source I, I of truth right there. Expect too many hours allocated that project. That was like it, uh, created for the purpose of um, porting uh, and GP applications to porn murder for like oh, development and process, it, not for production was, rounds. Yeah, that was the uh, that was the NISAP. Right. right. Yeah. Well, so in principle. The NESAP project um, should go away. I don't know if technically we're going to grandfather a few people in, so I'll, I'd, I'd have to look at that. Um, so, so maybe not everybody in that project will be renewed like that. I can we can say that. So it, it was it would be good you have another real production GPU allocation project. Yeah, I, well, I, I applied for uh, Perlmutter, so let's see. Yeah. Okay, well, good luck. You should know today. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers crossed. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, uh, this is Ashwin. I have a question about uh, the renewal as well. So you said you we are going to get to know today when the renewal is, right? Mm -hmm. Is that right, Clayton? Is it today? Yeah, after we do the uh, Iris software update uh, after one o'clock. And can we check that in the portal or, or do we get an email update or how is that like? Uh, you'll get an email update. Uh, you'll get an email award letter with the okay. amount of time that you were awarded and other mm -hmm. instructions. Then after that, the Iris um, interface will be in production and you will be able to log in and to, to choose 
which are users to continue, which users to get premium, but you're not in the real AY 2023 allocation page yet. So Clayton, um, can users log into ERCAP and see the status of their um, proposals? They should be able to, uh, it'll be in a read only mode. So uh, actually, no, they don't, they don't see, they don't have access to the award. Uh, tab, so they won't see how much they were awarded. They'll see if uh, the state says approved or. Is there a link for it? Uh, ERCAP.nurse.gov. And if you're a PI or an authorized preparer for your ERCAP request, you'll be able to see the uh, the request. Does the email include um, how, how many hours allocated, awarded? Yes. And, and that email goes to the PI and any authorized preparers on the ERCAP request. So if you were a PI proxy, but you were not an authorized preparer, then you have to check with your PI. All right, great. Well, I have my fingers crossed that uh, all of my projects like the nurse staff accounts get approved. <laughs> now we declined all those. Oh no. <laughs> All right, great. Any other questions? Okay, well, thank you, Helen. Thank you, this was very informative. Learned a lot. Um, if you all have any questions, you can always um, check out that webpage that, that Helen pointed out. Um, like I said, I'll, I'll upload these slides after, after this session is over can see all that. Okay. Well, thank you. All righty. So coming up, uh, what are we going to talk about in future months? Um, I don't actually know. <laughs> so next month, I think we're going to talk about uh, our user community and what our plans are there for uh, for our user community. Uh, but in February, it's, it's up in the air. Uh, so Please let us know if there's anything that, that you're interested in having as a topic, and we will talk about it. Uh, and as, as usual, of course, we'd love to hear, you know, if you have any lightning talk that you'd like to give uh, at the meeting or talk about some of your research that you've done that, that's used nurse resources. We'd also love to hear about that at an upcoming meeting. So please, please let us know and we'll definitely slot you in there. Okay, last but not least, last month's numbers. So uh, query utilization was 95.5%, so well done everybody. Uh, large jobs, which is jobs larger than at least 1,024 nodes or larger, um, made up 55.5% of all of the cycles that were used last month. Uh, you all sent in 694 new tickets. We closed 748 tickets, so go us. We closed more than we opened. Uh, so, but we still have a backlog of uh, 652 tickets that we are still working on. So that concludes our meeting. Does anybody have any questions, comments, anything you'd like to say before we go? Uh, Rebecca, I uh, just want to make sure uh, these office hours for parameter transitions. Oh, I forgot to turn on my video. Uh, does Do you guys still plan to continue? I think you briefly mentioned, but after January, because I do have some libraries applications I have to port, but uh, I don't have a time before early January to do all. Uh -huh. So this office hour in February, March be also helpful. Okay, that's good feedback. Uh, so we we don't have anything scheduled yet. Okay. But yes, I think we will continue because it is a really successful thing. People have really, really taken advantage of it. Yes. Yeah, I appreciate it. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah thanks. Yeah, we'll do that. And, and, and you know, in addition to the office hours, which are great, we are um, we're kind of rethinking our model of of NESAP, um, for the next year and. One thing I think we'd like to do is to engage with users who have um, who want to port or, or optimize for GPUs their 
codes or workflows, um, but don't want to necessarily engage for like five years or something like that, but have a shorter engagement, be it weeks or months and something like that. So um, it sounds like you might be a, a good um, candidate for that sort of thing. So you could send um, me or Rebecca maybe a, a, an email with, if you have any idea about kind of how long an engagement you think uh, you might need and what your code is and that sort of thing. Um, mm. We could certainly uh, keep that on file. And if we, if we implement this, uh, you, know, you might be one of the, the, the top candidates to engage with. Yeah. I, and then I, I do have a few, I could have very one small component or like a kernel from the, you know, right. kind of model or some uh, Python routines, from, but I, I do have some full fledged climate model, which is GPU ready using OpenACC, but not tested on Power Matter. And another Fortran code, I have no idea, no comments, but I want to post to uh, change to OpenMP to OpenMP MP deliver uh, directive stuff, but uh, I haven't had a chance to bring it to the help desk because I have no idea about this code. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um... Yeah, drop us an email. I think we yeah. also have a, you know, we also have a porting strategy page that I can't find right now, but we can, we'll, we'll send it back in the email if you, if you send it on us an email. Okay, that yeah. That might yeah. help as well. Yeah, we'll do. Yeah, thanks so much for the feedback. Yes. Yeah, thanks, Koichi. Um, so I, I think we've also talked about having another Query to Perlmutter tra training. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll probably have another one of those maybe February or March time frame. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, we'll schedule after the announcement of final retirement date. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> so like office hours accordingly as well. Uh-huh. Right. OK. Uh, any other comments, questions, anything? Do you have any update on the Perlmutter uh, ongoing uh, maintenance right now? I do not. Um, I hope to have one this afternoon, late afternoon. And so you'll send out an email today, Rebecca? That's my plan. OK. Yeah, Any any other questions? I, uh, this is Ashwin here again. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we have been using the Perlmutter, right? And we have been working on the GPUs. Uh, so we were using multiple nodes. Uh, and at one point, so we are using uh, uh, MPI for, uh, for mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. uh, at some point, we couldn't go beyond 25 nodes. So like more than 100 GPUs. Oh, interesting. Okay. And I think I have to further read into that, like also like what might the problem be? So as so at some point we couldn't yeah go, go beyond that. Like mm. and this was recently? Yeah, this was like two two weeks ago. Okay. Yeah. Well, so one thing that they're doing right now today on Perlmutter is um doing some large scale, some large scale scaling runs to try mm -hmm. to see if there's any problems. Um and uh, that, so that's one test that we will do. Um, but then again, if, you know, if your if your problem persists, um, then that might be another good candidate for our, for our staff to help look at too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. We want we want you to be able to run as big as you can. Right. So. Um, yeah, on Perlmutter, I would say you know keep trying, and then if it doesn't work, you know contact us. Because the software, the things are changing still pretty, pretty regularly, and so bugs are being fixed, and new things are, new mm -hmm. capabilities are being introduced. Um, a lot, and a lot of them are in software. So hopefully, the situation will be getting better and better and better all the time. But if you still are having problems, yeah, please let us know. Sure. Yeah, we definitely want to know. Um, yeah, hopefully some of these things are going to be fixed through this maintenance. So, 
Uh, so yes. I can ask one more question. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Sorry to bother you so much. Uh, this is totally different, but I, I about the job, none of the jobs that can get the queue. My understanding is that when a user submits multiple job, like say four or five, only the two of them are getting the queue, right? Or priority are considered to be that, so, right? yeah, so what happens is there's, you have two jobs that are eligible mm -hmm. to increase in priority. So your other jobs okay. are still in the queue, oh, but okay. they just retain the same priority until one of those jobs runs. And then that the third, the formerly third job is then eligible to okay. age. But see, in yeah. theory, your, your jobs that are uh, in lower priority in the queue could run, especially if they are short jobs um, because mm. those would fit really well in what we call the backfill okay so so what the scheduler does maybe this is too much explanation but what the scheduler does is it goes through the list of jobs in priority order down to a certain threshold and and it says can i schedule this within the next three days without changing the schedule that i've already built okay oh, okay okay and then uh, and then after it does that, and, and it's at the end of that list, then it goes down the whole list and it says, is there anything on this list that I could start right now that wouldn't interfere with this schedule that I've already built? Mm -hmm. So it, that schedule that it's already built contains holes in it. And those holes are typically short in time, but they mm -hmm. could be actually fairly large in number of nodes. I see so we so we actually find that your wait time is directly proportional to the wall time request mm. um, and it's only mildly correlated with the, the number of nodes that you request at least up until you get to about half the size of the machine okay can you kind of explain can i give you my use case so sure. i so i have working for three actually four projects and i'm running so their projects are independent, mm -hmm. but uh, of course different, and different, they have different repo. So oh. maybe one project might have very low uh, allocation left for given time. Mm -hmm. The other project maybe still have abundant, mm -hmm. but I have I'm running simulations for each project. So sometimes I use low priority queue for project that has much less allocation left. Mm -hmm. And then maybe I still use a regular queue for other project. And then when I look at my queue of the job, I have maybe three regular jobs for you know projects with adequate mm -hmm. amount of allocation. Mm -hmm. Maybe one or two low priority jobs for the project that has maybe less computing time. And then so I was wondering if only two uh, can get some you know can be considered by schedulers this low priority queue. Because I'm always having five to six in the queue. I want. I was wondering if my low priority queue does has any disadvantage of of doing mm -hmm. this way of uh, managing my my task. Let me okay. add one thing. Effect. Yeah. So when two use two jobs per user, actually applies two you two jobs per user per QoS. So you could have two jobs in regular it, queue being considered as well as two jobs okay. in queue. Yes, and, and also oh, also great. per repo, right, Helen? So is it per repo? I, I believe it's also per repo. So if you have uh, two jobs from Project A and two jobs from Project B that mm -hmm. are both in the regular queue, they're not competing against each other. You're right. It's per oh. association, right? So association yeah. means user project QoS. Ah, mm -hmm. that that's very good to know. Thank you so much. Okay, yeah. So I don't think I, I am, there's no nothing wrong or disadvantage in the way I am doing my work. Okay, is this information available somewhere in the documentation? I haven't carefully. I mean, read. yeah, I don't know. I think we have something about that, but okay. if I find if I find missing, I might uh, suggest. Uh, yeah, uh, well, yeah, yeah, we actually we welcome um, people yeah. to you know, submit a, a, a pull request and, and try yeah. to get whatever we want in the documentation. Yeah, yeah so Maybe internal discussions about, uh, because we change our scheduling policies from time to time. And so it's not okay. absolutely transparent of everything. <laughs> oh, 
but uh, yeah, but based on my workflow, I also kind of uh, gonna uh, ask you guys to consider low priority queue on Parmata as well, because that's how sometimes I still keep something get going for project, even though the account is going low, but uh, still simulation, it's a long term, not too high priority, but it's still get going is better. So I use low priority mm -hmm. queue, so. Yeah, yeah, well, <laughs> anyway. I think I told you. I think I told you before. Like, yeah, we, we're we're not planning on it at this time. I mean, we'll no? have to see. Okay. We'll have to see how things go. Okay. Uh, but really, the low priority queue is there to increase demand, and so oh, okay. it seems like we have we we have a lot of demand, and oh. we don't need a low priority queue. Oh, okay. That's so if you can convince everyone else not to use it. Yeah, and it's empty. Then maybe we'll put a low priority queue in. Okay, I'll, I'll, I might give it a try. I don't okay. Think... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. All right. Any any other questions or comments? Oh, all right. Well, thanks, everybody. Thanks for joining us and um, hope you have a great festive season, as we call it in Australia. Um, I, I want to spread that. That's a really good phrase to use. So I hope you have a great and restful festive season and that you're back in the new year, uh, you know, stronger than ever. So we'll see you all then. Thanks for joining us today. Thank thanks. you very much. Appreciate it. Bye-bye. Right.